let's briefly do a few things with the data that we've got here in ArcMap that we've mapped out in the field. One of the things that we can do is change the symbology based on some attributes. Remember that every one of these layers has an attribute table. It's the I part of GIS. Here are my waypoint attributes. I've got a whole bunch of fields that originally came over from the DNR Garmin program. I can easily add a field though. Let's say I want to map and analyze a tree height. Tree height. Great. Let's say I also want to add a field and call it short integer is OK on the tree height, but for this next field I want it to be text because I want it to be called tree species. I'm going to start editing now and open up the attribute table. I'm going to scroll over to the new fields that I've added and I know that waypoint 285 is an aspen tree. My tree height I'm collecting in feet. Waypoint 287 was a 20 foot high pine. Two eighty-eight. I'm checking the the ident every time to make sure that I'm on the right field, on the right tree. Two eighty-eight was a locust, a honey locust to be more specific, and it was only ten feet high. Okay, I'm done editing. Stop editing. Yes, save my edits. And now what can I do? Okay, I'm going to change the label field to tree species. And now I've got them labeled as trees and the tree species. There's my pine, there's my aspen, and there's my honey locust. I can also change these symbols to be quantities and I'm going to map it on, how about tree height? And maybe graduated symbols. In other words, a larger symbol, maybe make it green. For a larger tree. Oh, now I can see that the honey locust was fairly short, followed by the pine, and then the aspen was the tallest. More importantly though than the symbology is that the fa is the fact that we've got all of these data sets uh, with their attribute tables. So again, we can add fields, we can delete fields, we can symbolize based on those fields, and we can also hyperlink. Let's do that next. To hyperlink, let's go ahead and click on the identify button. Click on my aspen tree and bring over the identify window. I'm going to right click on there, add hyperlink. Let's link to a document. I've got a photograph that I took on site that's sitting up there on my Picasso web account. It's a publicly accessible Dropbox so I know I'll be able to access it. Now that I've added the hyperlink, click on the hyperlink symbol and there's my photograph at that spot. Okay, so in that segment we've discussed how to symbolize your field data and also how to hyperlink photographs to your field data. Now remember these hyperlinked objects can be anything. Could be a sketch you or your students made out in the field that you've scanned and placed somewhere on your local computer or on the, on the web. 
could be a URL putting you to a website with maybe some data, maybe a Google Docs or something like that, or a, a website indicating what is an aspen tree and why are aspen trees growing where they are. It could be anything, text file, whatever. You've got a lot of power here. Lastly, think outside the box. It doesn't have to be trees that you're mapping. It could be historical buildings, could be pH you've collected in local streams, ponds, and lakes. It could be telephone boxes, cables, anything. Litter on campus. Think larger than this particular example, but realize that you've got a lot of power at your fingertips here in the desktop GIS environment using some base maps from ArcGIS Online. Lastly, save your project. Thanks.